Today we're answering a question that has plagued the homebrewing community for years. And that is, should Swedish fish be alcohol? Let's find out. So I know you've been asking this for years. Some of you have just been waiting and waiting. So who's gonna do it? Who's gonna make Swedish fish alcohol? And here I am today. I am gonna show you Swedish fish wine and Swedish fish mead. What are Swedish fish? For those of you who don't know what they are, um, in my little bit of research here, I found this to be kind of fun. This says, this is after a quick Google search, talking about the flavor of them, what they taste like. It says, uh, the mysterious flavor of Swedish fish, although candy lovers in the US continue to debate, the true flavor of these fish gummies is actually lingonberries, also called cowberries. So this is a lingonberry flavored gummy, and it's what it is. It's literally a gummy, sugar, all that stuff, and uh, I don't know if you've had it before, but you should try them by themselves. I bought a big old box of Swedish fish uh, packs, basically, from Amazon. It's about 48 ounces in total, and I decided, all right, let's go ahead and make a wine in a mead. So. On my right side here, I have the wine. I have the mead right here. I'll put both of the recipes up, even though you're probably not gonna go make this, and that's okay. The wine features the Swedish fish themselves, plus sugar. The mead, of course, is the Swedish fish, and the honey. Um, you can see a color difference. It's quite interesting, too, to note. So, I basically started by making a, I got a big old pot of water, which was about two gallons of water. I got that to boiling uh, temperature, and then I threw all of those Swedish fish into that water. I let that set for about 40 minutes in the boiling process, hoping that to get all of the sugars I could out of the, the candy themselves. Because they're gummies, they didn't really all melt. All the sugar didn't melt. So I had to, uh, at some point, separate the little gummy pieces that were left over from the now water uh, sugar mixture that we had. We then split that into two containers. I put one pound of sugar into the wine and just mixed that in. It was still warm. And one pound of honey into the mead. We added um, Lavin EC1118, which is a champagne yeast, notably used for just fermenting things because it's quick and effective. Pitch that in there. I did uh, add a little bit of like Fermi dough because I don't, unless I'm, uh, you know, missing something, I don't think that candy has any sort of nutritional value to yeast. So we did give them some uh, Fermi dough. The starting gravities for each were a little bit different. The wine was 1.078 starting gravity and the mead was 1.062. They sat and fermented for like two weeks, three weeks maybe, took a little while. Um, and then we went ahead and racked them into new containers. Their gravities after the primary, after they fermented, were down to 1.000. I did a little taste test, not on video, but I kind of noted they're gonna need sugar because they had lost a little bit of that character. So we stabilized them with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite which are two ways, two things we use to, uh, it used in conjunction can halt fermentation. If you were making this and you wanted to stabilize it without that, you can pasteurize, so you can do that. We did that, let it sit for a little while longer. We came back and we added some more honey to the mead version. I think it was roughly about a half a pound. And uh, I think two, one cup of sugar to the, Swedish fish wine, I think that's what it was. Uh, I did try to clear them. Let it be known, I tried to clear these with Sparkaloid, uh, which is a thing you can buy. You put it in hot water. I dumped that in, and it's normally worked well for me. Obviously, these are hazy. They've been sitting for a while longer. We're now mm, two and a half months old for these. And I know that some of you already type in the comments, well, you should let them age a little longer before you taste them. I think you have high expectations for what these will be. These are roughly, uh, this is a 10.5% wine. This is a, uh, my math, I'm gonna do some quick math, 7.8-ish percent 
uh, mead, so not super hot, I think. Somewhere in that realm. Anyways, I say we start with the one that looks most true to the Swedish fish color, which is red, for those of you who missed it. This is like a pink, straight up pink. Not clear, this is the wine. It still smells a lot like the um, Swedish fish. You don't really smell Swedish fish, but when you taste them, I feel like you also get the aroma of it just with how that works. It's sugary, I get sweetness. I'm not really getting a lot of booziness, which is probably a good thing. Mm, there's a little bit in there as I dig deep. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Ooh, yeah, definitely a little booziness when you actually taste it, but it's really not bad. It's got a little bit of sweetness. Our final gravity is pretty low, 1.004, so we're barely above dry. It, ta I, it tastes like the Swedish fish lingonberry um, <laughs> flavor profile. It's actually pretty good. I'm, I had not tasted it since I back sweetened it, so it's been a little bit. I mean, it's like, it's just juicy. It's juicy, it's got some sugar to it, got the berry side, a little bit of heat from alcohol, but again, two and a half-ish months is not a long time to sit. I'm actually pretty dang impressed with that. I do wonder how it's gonna age, um, which I will age it, thank you very much, commenters. I will go ahead and probably bottle some of this and come back later on in life, but as it stands, Swedish fish wine is uh, it's pretty good. You could get away with that. Let's switch over to the mead, which is uh, obviously a very different color. I don't quite know why, other than to say the honey might have really messed up the coloring of this, but I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing. I don't know. It's weird that they're so different. Ooh, yeah, honey aroma is way different, or honey being in this adds a way different aroma. You don't get as much of the um, that lingonberry-like idea. Definitely maybe a little more booziness. Hmm. All right, here we go. Swedish fish mead. Hmm. Um... You get a lot more, obviously, honey character. Back sweetening with honey, sounds weird to say, is distracting from the Swedish fish flavor. You get a lot more of this warm honeyness, honey side, and I want the Swedish fish to pop through. It's like the the, the berry-y kind of idea is like an undertone, but it takes a big back seat to this floral. I mean, floral because of the fermentation, but also for floral because of the actual back sweetening honey we used. I wonder if I'd gone lighter with that, if it might have helped. Our final gravity here is uh, 1.010. So I must have used like four ounces of honey. You can still get a little bit of that Swedish fish side. But if I handed a, a glass of this to my buddy and said, hey, this is Swedish fish mead. And they were uh, aware of what a Swedish fish tasted like, they would be like, this is not it. This is this is not that flavor that I want. It's also got a little bit of um, a heat, just like the wine, and a little bit of yeastiness to it. I feel like my, maybe in my mind is just creating that, but it's got a little funkiness. I don't love this. I don't love the mead version. I'm not going to sit here and say I love the wine version, but I will say the wine is much more up my alley for what I wanted from this. That right there could be a good representation of a Swedish fish booze or alcohol. The honey side is fun, but it does distract a lot. This, I'm saying a lot of really silly things here. And one of the silly things I'm about to say is the Swedish fish flavor is very delicate and it needs to not be distracted from or taken, have something take away from it because it, it is delicate. So I think when you add this honey in here, you're getting rid of the uh, delicacy of the Swedish fish. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is outlandish for me to be dissecting down this candy booze in this way, but it's fun. I am pleasantly surprised. The wine is much better than the mead, 
I can confirm in my personal opinion that if, if you have the chance to uh, ferment Swedish fish at any point in your career, um, I would say to do it in a wine format. The mead, it was kind of a waste of honey, not gonna lie. It's not bad, but I think I could have used that pound and a half of honey in a better way. Sugar is cheap. I mean, you can go and like get a whole lot more sugar for way less than honey. So maybe you try the wine version, but I, uh, I've i actually enjoyed this one. I've done a bunch of these. I don't know if you've uh, seen my channel before. If you're not new or if you're new here, I have done tons of different things. I've done um, Sour Patch Watermelon, uh, Starburst. I've done a Fireball Hard Seltzer, which is like those little atomic fireballs. Uh, I've done that before. I have done Lemon Heads. I have uh, done Twizzlers. I've done Swedish Fish. I have done so many of these things and they're really fun and silly to play around with. Uh, obviously, you're probably not gonna go make this. If you do make this, please let me know down in the comments. Hop into my Discord where you can chat with me. I wanna know your experience too because this is a wild adventure. And uh, it's been kind of fun though. I plan to do more of these. I've already got a bunch of candies kind of hidden away, back ready to go. And I have some silly ideas. If you enjoyed this, let me know. If you wanna see another dumb candy, um, <laughs> let me know as well. I do make serious meads and a really good serious meads. I've got some awards you can see behind me. That's from my real stuff I make, not my Swedish fish uh, ventures. So if you wanna learn how to make any of those recipes, you can find that. I've got fruits, I've got traditional meads, I've made tons of stuff. But hit subscribe, hit like. We're still on the road to 50,000 subs. I don't know when this is getting posted, but I, we have yet to hit it, so maybe you can help us get there. There is a fun giveaway for this barrel back behind this star sand. You can be a part of that. I will be giving that away, giving that away 50,000 subscribers, but uh, we gotta get there first. Thanks for watching. Go make some Swedish fish alcohol, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.